Ryan, uh, mm. got a special guest on the show. Girls Aloud. Yes! This is Nicola Roberts. Amazing. Very excited about this. Uh, I and producer Callum caught up with her a little bit earlier and I asked her what on earth she's up to at the moment. Check this out. I've just shot my first film, which is coming out hopefully next year. And I was in the studio really late last night to finish a song that hopefully will be placed into that. I'm a bit tired today. After wow. admit, I was uh, there till late and deadlines and all of that. What's the feature And I'm just writing, really. I d it's not been announced and it's not my thing to announce, so I don't <laughs> really feel like I can say anything, but I'm really excited. And so you just dangled this little carrot. I shot it in a lockdown. So yeah, you said what I'm doing and that's what I'm doing, so... <laughs> No, that's cute. I shot it in March while we were in lockdown and it was so nice to be out of London and in a different space and actually working. So that was great. But, it's, you know, like anything, there's always such long lead times on all of these things. So you can't really talk about them until... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We totally understand. But it's great to know that that's what you're up to. Um, we'll definitely have to keep yeah, a look out for exciting. that. Yeah, it's exciting. Let's talk the 10th anniversary of uh, your album, yes. Cinderella's Eyes. Can we just talk about that for yeah. a minute? I feel great about it, to be honest. And I feel like I'm in a little bit of a love bubble with the fans because it's been so nice to reconnect with them over the celebration. I felt a little a bit like I was potentially letting them down when people thought new, it was new music and it was the vinyl announcements. I thought they were all just going to be like, oh, it's just a vinyl. But I really had no idea how important vinyl vinyl is to everybody. I never expected it to sell the way it's, way it's selling. And I'm so happy that we were able to get across the line with licensing and with the producers and writers of the other demos that didn't make the original album and with the label to get that second disc out mm -hmm. because it was touch and go for quite a long time and we were working on it since March. And like anything with record labels and with releases, and essentially when you sign sign a deal you no longer own your music to, to, to be able to get that second disc deluxe out was very uphill but I just felt like it was important for the people who loved the record the first time round to just have the whole thing like they were sitting in my library doing nothing and I just thought they might as well have them that's so lovely to hear that they were just kind of sat there and now they're, they're, they're with the fans where now they're out there yeah where they should be so we where can... they belong <laughs> yeah where we can enjoy them because they still have producers <laughs> on that original album, right? Got Diplo. Yeah, it's um, it's just yeah. really exciting to have this back. It, it, do you know what was cute? I actually trolled through a couple of the reviews from when it was first released back in 2011. Yes. Um, cracking reviews. Like, it, so everyone was just kind of like, oh, you've got to watch out for the quiet ones. This is the best one of the <laughs> Girls Aloud ones. Um, this one from The Guardian. It's like, well, Girls Aloud's hiatus rumbled on Nicola Roberts set about having herself a solo career and her debut album threw up its fair share of surprises crack it isn't it i'm so yeah. it's just so lovely to... i think just yeah i think that because i made the decision to do something different um i think with the critics it paid off and i really couldn't have asked for better reviews than what i got at the time and i was blown away by some of the reviews that came in and it just felt very rewarding to receive the critical acclaim it was it was really nice absolutely and uh, I'm, uh, we're joined here by producer Callum, who's a big fan girl of you and the album, indeed. Probably the biggest one around that I know as well. I know he's got a couple of questions yeah. for you. I just wanted to ask, how nice has it been to revisit this music? Because my favourite songs from the album are Lucky Day and Beat of My Drum. What are your favourites? Mm -hmm. My favourites are, I think Sticks and Stones will always hold a little special place for me. I really like the metronomy tracks, I and Fish Out of Water. And I think that Beat of My Drum, Yo-Yo, Gladiator, they were all with a producer called Dimitri Tickerboy, yeah. who is, is basically like my musical band friends so those songs that make the bulk of the album obviously i have such a fondness for because of him 8.52. Go to your breakfast with Paris and Dave. Uh, if you just missed it, you are hearing from Nicola Roberts from Girls Aloud. And we've got more tea for you just now. Callum, producer Callum, Callum from Fans, uh, <laughs> had a couple of questions uh, about her recent performance at Maggie Hoopla. Check it out. When 
Jess, a fan of yours, it was great to see you up on stage with Mighty Hoopla and singing alongside Cheryl, as well as on The Masked Singer. How were those experiences performing again? I mean, I just love to sing, so, like, I think that with the Mighty Hoopla performance, obviously, Cheryl was booked to headline the year before, but because of COVID, like, no one could celebrate a Mighty Hoopla last year, so the fact that this year, finally, it was on and everybody could go there and, like, gather and have that really fab, like, day or so, just made it all the more special. And I haven't been on stage in front of a crowd. Yes, I did the Masked Singer, where it's an audience, and... You know, I had the short run with the play, but when you think about the core audience of Mighty Hoopla, is it felt like a Girls Aloud concert, to be honest. <laughs> so I felt so, so much love coming off the crowd that I didn't quite expect it. The crowd was so loud, like I had no music left in my ears. So I was literally free falling with that vocal thinking, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I'm in time anymore. But all they can hear is the crowd screaming. Yeah, it was so nice. I'm there with you. Yeah, it's so, so cute. good. And obviously the mass singer was just bonkers, but so much fun getting to sing all of those songs. With this trip little down memory lane with Cinderella's eyes, we've uh, pulled up a, an old interview with you. Oh. It's this is quite something. Nicola Roberts meets Lady Gaga. Do you remember this? I'm messing oh, with you. Oh, I know. <gasps> so, well, yes, I do. We've been talking a lot about Gaga this week, actually, just with the House of Gucci being re uh, released and whatnot. And we just thought this would tie in quite nicely because we've, we've re-watched this interview. And we just wanted to see if you how much you remembered from it. We're going to ask you a couple of questions. We're going to see if, okay. like, if you can remember. So I've got one for you here yeah. right now. So you gave Lady Gaga a gift. What was that gift? Was it the tape? Um, no, I didn't well, give her a gift, gift yeah. then. <laughs> you actually gave her a physical gift at the interview. The, the tights was a, a, a story that came off the back of it. But can you remember the physical gift you gave her at the start of the interview? No, oh my God. What was it? <laughs> oh, wow. I love this. Uh, so, okay. It was a teacup. It was because a teacup. Because what? She's in Britain. And we have tea here. I think so, yeah. Uh, it was the <laughs> right, uh, right. time of her Born This Way album, and he gave her a lovely teacup. And then, of course, she told you the story off the back about that, about the tights. Yes. Do you have one for a Callum? Just how was the experience? <laughs> you you look beautiful in the interview, by the way, as does Gaga. How was the experience of meeting Gaga? I mean, she's just incredible, right? She's utterly the most incredible artist, writer, actress, singer performer um activist i was a huge fan and we actually shared the same tv booker at the time so she oh. said you know mtv she's coming here to do tv and then it was like why doesn't nicola interview her i'm not a presenter um i definitely was not a presenter back then so it was kind of like okay well if it just turns into a bit of a chat then fine i think that yeah i can handle that but gaga being such the statuesque icon that she is led the interview like it was an interview and so i think you can see me like shuffling through the cards like i'm trying to find the next question to ask um do you know what i love about yeah. it though it's that you are real you are relatable in that interview and you know even talking to you now it's just been an absolute joy speaking to you Nick, I, I do Thank love it. Thank you so much. For the future, can we expect maybe new music? I've actually, for the last few months, started to collaborate again with Dimitri, and we're now working together again. And I just feel like if I get to a point with the music that I've written where I feel, I feel like this is really good, then you will hear something. That's all I need to hear, um, <laughs> that you're writing again and that you're happy and feeling fabulous. And I can't wait for the uh, for the for the tea on the film. What song from Mr. Jolly's Eyes would you like us to play? Well, I've been told that your favourite is Lucky Day. Amazing. Thank you, Nicola. <laughs> That is so cute. Oh, my God. That's so, so cute. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, you can buy the 10th anniversary reissue of Nicola's album, Cinderella's Eyes, with all those brand new tracks as well. That's on plasticpop.co.uk. <laughs>
Roberts' Lucky Day, in case you didn't know what it was called. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. That's a really good bop, actually, oh. especially for a home day. Uh, thanks again to Nicola Roberts from Thank Girls Aloud uh, yes. for chatting to us. Hope you enjoyed that interview.